Good morning from Ken Cox here at Glendark Garden Centre. Uh, the Easter holidays are just about upon us and that's traditionally the time that most gardeners think about getting out and getting the garden sorted for the new year. There's lots and lots of colour already at this time of year. What we're standing in front of here is a collection of Glendoit grown camellias which are absolutely at their peak at the moment. They've been really good this year. The weather's been cool but not too cold. Unfortunately many camellias are sold in Scotland that simply don't flower. Uh, many people um, come into Glendoic reporting that they've bought camellias from um, other chains of garden centres and DIY shops that will remain nameless and, and uh, they've often had them for five or even ten years and they've never flowered. Uh, and the problem is that, that uh, camellia japonicas just don't flower in Scotland. It's not hot enough for them to set flower buds. The colour range of camellias that do well in Scotland are, are really just pinks and reds. Don't ask for white camellias, they don't flower well at all. The ones that do really well in Scotland are the Williams eye camellias um, and these are based on a Chinese uh, camellia species and they flower well in cool summer areas like Scotland. This one here I'm particularly keen on, it's a new one called Black Lace which has an amazing peony flower. We also have Donation, probably the most famous free flowering pink camellia of all time. It covers itself with flower every year, even when it's absolutely tiny. Now the secret with camellias is uh, to avoid an east-facing aspect because the flowers as they swell, uh, if they have early morning sun on a cold morning, they, they, you lose the flowers. And generally they will go on and on flowering for weeks and weeks, especially if you get a reasonably kind spring. This one here is called Freedom Bell. It's got the longest flowering period of all. It often goes on for two months of, uh, of flowering. They like acid soil, reasonably well drained but moist. They do well against a wall. They're evergreen and uh, you can even use them as a kind of informal hedge or screen um, and uh, you can treat them like a flowering laurel kind of idea and prune them to shape if you, if you like. Uh, we also find that if they get too big and you cut them back you might lose the flowers for a year but they respond extremely well to that so don't worry if in a small garden situation if you're worried that they might get too big. So this is the time of year that uh, the mass of colour of spring bedding is at its, at its peak. Now you will find if you go to your local uh, DIY store that they have all the geraniums and the lobelias in already. Don't touch any of that stuff. It's far, far too cold for it. The problem is that they sell the same plants from Land's End to John O'Groats at the same time of year. You can't plant tender bedding out in Scotland until well into May and if you live in a cold inland valley then I wouldn't plant it out till the end of May. If it gets frosted you'll just have to throw it out and start again. But there are all sorts of bedding plants that are tough enough to be planted out in the, uh, in the early spring. They'll take a bit of frost. The obvious ones would be pansies and violas here. The violas have smaller flowers than the, than the pansies. Uh, some of them are scented but not very many. And the pansies get larger and larger flowers each year. Uh, it seems the breeders get working and get even more flamboyant. Now these pansies should go on flowering for several weeks, if not a month or two, if you keep taking the dead heads off. Then you've got the primroses and the polyanthus. They've reached their, the peak season now. They start coming in in February and March and they're starting to, uh, to, to finish now. The primroses are the short stemmed ones. The polyanthus, as you can see, have much longer stems and sit up better. And again, like the pansies, the breeders have been excelling themselves, coming out with every colour and combination of colour uh, known to man. My personal preference is to try and stick to one colour in a display, but some people just like to have everything louder than everything else. That's absolutely fine. That's just a, a, a question of preference, really. And then you've got the spring bulbs coming in now. Daffodils here, just about to first flower buds forming. Tulips. They'll be out in the next couple of weeks if they warm up. Ideal for putting in a, in a container for spring. This is Fritillaria meleagris, uh, the snake's head fritillary, beautiful plant. Um, that is probably better just planted in a border. And then you've got hyacinths. Um, most people grow hyacinths for forcing into flower at Christmas and New Year, but actually if you plant them in the garden in the autumn, this is the time of year they come up. 
scent is absolutely fantastic. One other bedding plant which is hardy enough, uh, as long as we don't get any really severe frost or sweet peas, you can start thinking about planting them out now. If uh, the weather forecast warns of really cold weather, you'd probably better fleece them, but otherwise you can start planting them out now. The earlier you get them out, the earlier in the season that you'll get flowers. Um, and sweet peas do flower for months and months in the summer, so they're in now. But apart from that, I wouldn't touch any other bedding plants at this time of year. Uh, we've had uh, a little bit of frost overnight and uh, there's more frost, a little bit of frost forecast. So uh, just beware of planting any tender plants out too early in the season.